All right, got another um, simple on shape tutorial here. Uh, today we're going to be making this simple 3D printable or castable planter vase that you could uh, set on top of your desk, plant some stuff in, use as a pencil holder, or something like that. And so uh, maybe you've just got a 3D printer and are looking to start printing a few designs of your own, and maybe you're just getting into on shape as well. Uh, this is a good place to start. It's very simple. Um, and hopefully you can follow along. So let's just dive right in. We're going to right click over here in the tab manager. We'll create a new part studio. We'll call this uh, base tutorial. All right. And right away, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the front plane. We'll select the front plane. We'll hit N to bring us normal to it. And we'll hit Shift S to bring up a sketch. And again, Shift S is just the shortcut. We can select the front plane and then just hit sketch up here if we want to do that. But I, I suggest learning the keyboard shortcuts. It'll just help speed things up for yourself over time. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select L, another keyboard shortcut. We're gonna create a horizontal line and then a vertical line. Hit escape. We're also gonna create a or a vertical construction geometry. And what I've done there is I've hit L and then Q to convert it into construction geometry. Q kind of toggles it between real geometry and construction geometry. And we'll bring that over so that it's horizontally in line with this point here. And what this, this line's gonna be is it's gonna be our um, revolve axis. So it's not actually gonna be used to generate any of the shape, but we're just gonna re revolve the uh, surface around it. Okay. And what we'll do here is we'll hit D to dimension this line. And we'll select this line and then select our axis. And that will allow us to dimension this as a diameter. So we want our vase to be 100 millimeters in diameter roughly. And then we'll say its height is 100 times 1.618. And 1.618 is just the, the golden ratio uh, rectangle. If you've ever heard of that, it just is an aesthetically pleasing rectangle. So we'll do something like that. And now what we'll do is we'll revolve this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two lines and we're gonna spin them around this axis that we've created and create a surface that's going to define uh, the starting shape that we want. So we'll select these two. We'll go up here to revolve. You can also hit Shift W and then we'll select our revolve axis there. Now what we want to do is we want to add a bottom fillet. We want this to be round. We don't want it to be just a sharp edge like that. We'll fillet it. We'll select radius, curvature, 15 millimeters. And so curvature, what this is, is it's going to maintain the blend of curvature from fillet to fillet. It's, and this is a bit of a, a more um, advanced surfacing topic, so I'm not going to get into it much right now, but um, it just blends the surfaces between the, the adjacent surfaces and the fillet together nicer. So I'm going to select that. I'll give it a radius of 15 millimeters and voila. So our shape is starting to come together here. What we're going to do now is we're going to split this shape. What we want is an edge that we can use to generate these uh, circular shapes that we were using before. So we're going to select the front plane. Sorry, we'll hit split up here surfaces and then we'll split it we'll hide one of those surfaces so we just see the one with our shape on it all right now what we want to do is we want to create a plane that is point normal so this plane is going to be the normal of the plane will be this line and the point will be this point here. And that's basically just created a, a flat plane with the, 
contains this point and this line is normal to it. What we'll do then is hit N. We'll create a sketch, shift S, and we'll draw a circle here. We'll hit D to dimension the circle. We'll give it a diameter of 12. And we'll say that this distance here is something like three millimeters. All right, now what we wanna do is we'll sweep this circle just along that one edge. Because now what we wanna do is we wanna blend this bottom edge. We want this circle, the bottom edge, we don't want it to just drag down and create a bunch of lumps on the bottom of the planter. Basically, we want this point here to blend in tangent down to this bottom of the uh, the planter. And that'll make a lot more sense when I, when I actually draw it up here. But I'll show it to you on this one. So you can see this, uh, this circular surface isn't just protruding down in this pattern and creating a bunch of lumps on the bottom. It's actually coming down in tangent to the bottom surface. So you get this nice, flat, even surface on the bottom of the planter. All right, okay, another plane. We'll go point normal, so Select this line for the normal, and this for the point. And we'll draw another circle. We'll select that plane, Shift S, circle. We can again hit C for circle. And then what we wanna do is we wanna hover over this point and ensure that we have the orange dotted line showing that our circle center point will be vertically aligned with that uh, point that we've hovered over. And there we go. So the circle is now tangent to this bottom face and vertically aligned with the midpoint of the split. We'll hit D and we'll give this a diameter of 12. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna take this face. Oh, actually, sorry, I forgot something here. What we gotta do is we've also gotta add a line vertically to this point here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give us a point in the sketch that we can reference in the future loft command. And you'll see, you'll see what I mean in a second. So we'll hit OK. And we also need to add a point that's the same point on this face that we wanna reference. So we're basically gonna tell the loft, hey, this point and this point, sorry, this point and this point, they're the same points and we don't wanna connect this point here to this point down here or this point here to this point up here because you get weird self-intersecting geometry and the, the loft will fail. So we'll go up here, we'll hit loft, make sure it's new, solid, and we'll start from this profile and go down to this profile. It's thinking all right, there we go. We want the start profile condition to be normal to the profile as well as the end. And we'll do something like three, and that gives us a nice loft that blends those shapes together. I think that's looking good. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna come back to the front plane. We'll hit N, we'll sketch, We'll go up to U, which is use the projector convert, and we'll select this line here, which brings in the top line of the top of this uh, circular extrusion. It's basically projecting this outer edge of the circular cross section onto the plane, which creates a straight line once it's projected onto that plane. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit circle. We'll go to the midpoint here, hover over the midpoint, it'll lock to it. And we're gonna draw a circle that matches the diameter of that underlying circular cross section. We're gonna add a vertical line here. Again, this is line, you can see all the keystrokes I'm doing down here, but uh, we'll hit L for line. 
and we'll draw it vertical. And Shift W to bring up Revolve. We want to make sure it's selecting solid. And we'll revolve this face around this axis to kind of give us this like nice circular capping part. Make sure Add is selected here, and we want to add it to this part. So if it's new, it's just going to create a new separate part that's not um, included in this geometry. So we want to make sure that we hit Add, and we'll merge it with part one. All right. Now what we want to do is we want a circular pattern. We want to pattern this around uh, this central axis. And again, we have our central axis here in sketch one, which is our construction geometry that we created early on. And so what we'll do is we'll hit circular pattern. We'll select part one as our entities to pattern. We'll select these, this uh, central axis that we created in sketch one as our um, axis of the pattern. We'll say, hey, we want to go full 360 degrees around that axis, and we want four instances. We don't want four, we want 30. And that's going to create this kind of puffy vase looking thing that we're, we're starting to get close here. Light OK. All right, and now what we want to do is we'll go back to the front plane, we'll sketch again, and we'll select our original sketch and hit U. And that's going to project all of the lines from the original sketch onto this new sketch. And I could have done this all in sketch one, but I like to keep sketches separate for um, different types of operations. So we'll do that, we'll hit OK. And then we'll again revolve this around that axis. It's giving us a solid shape that fills everything up nicely in here. And again, we'll fill at this bottom edge with 15 millimeters curvature. And what that's done is it's just created this sort of filler material on the inside. If I uh, isolate this, you can see it's just that shape there. Again, you can isolate any part by just right clicking it and hitting isolate. So now what we want to do is we want to Boolean everything here together. We want to make sure that we have all of this stuff as one part. We don't want a bunch of these separate parts like it is right now. So we'll just hit Boolean and we'll just click and drag, select all. It's going to select everything. We don't want to select the surfaces. So let's hide those. Boolean, select everything. There we go. Now we've got a single part that's including everything that we just created. But now we want to hollow this whole thing out. So what we're going to do now is we'll create another sketch on the front plane. And we will use the reference edge from one of our surfaces. So I'm just going to hide part one here to get it out of the way. And I'll hide surface here. And we want to use project this edge of the surface. Oh, that's got the wrong edge there. Shift P will hide all other sketches, hide out everything and just clean up the view. Um, again, we'll hit use project. We'll select these edges. And what we want to do now is hit O to offset. We want to create a shell within this that is five millimeters thick. And now what we'll do is we'll hover over this midpoint here on this line. We'll go up well above the top of this geometry here. We'll go over and we'll drag this up to meet that point. And we'll say that this is, you know, 225. It doesn't matter. It just needs to be much longer than our part so that we make sure that we're cutting everything out when we, when we hollow out the planter. I'll hide these surfaces again. Okay, now we can do one more revolve. We'll select this sketch profile we just created. We'll revolve it around there. Instead of add though, we want to hit remove and it's going to act as this like cutting tool. It's hollowing out the center of the planter. We want to make sure that it's interacting with part one. And then that's it, we'll hit okay. 
And there we go. That's the main bulk of the geometry done. I'm just going to select the uh, material. We'll say it's uh, polycarbonate, or we'll say it's ABS. And then we will edit the appearance. We'll make it green. And there's a few other finishing touches we can do here to make it uh, a little nicer to print. We can add some light fillets. Again, it doesn't need to be curvature anymore because we're not really using it to define the outer form of the geometry, but you can leave it as curvature if you'd like. I'm just gonna hit distance. I'll hit two millimeters. And what I'll do is I'll right click, select equal length radius edges. And that's gonna select all of these at once. So we don't need to go around and reselect them. You know what, I'll, I'll, and I'll give this a one. I want to. I want that puffiness of each one to be a little bit more pronounced. All right. And then we'll fill it this edge as well, just to round it out a little bit nicer. We'll give that a radius of two. And there you go. That's, uh, that's it basically. Hopefully you're able to follow along. Um, yeah, happy printing, happy catting. Uh, stay tuned and subscribe if you wanna see See more of these tutorials. Cheers.